in today's video, we are going to learn how to turn a book like this into a book like this, where you can art journal in plenty of spaces, plenty of pages, plenty of room. So keep watching to find out how I did it. Lots of you were asking me about how to put pages in here and bind it and everything. So I'm going to show you that in this video. First, I need to finish doing the inside of this. So I'm going to do that in time lapse. But uh, let's just go over a few of the things you'll need. So you'll want to have your journal done inside and out. Uh, you can always add to it, but the main things, like you can always paint on top or add things but the main papers and cover have to be there. You will need paper, pierce, paper piercer or an awl. I bought these at the dollar store. They just came together in a pack and one is a little bit thicker and one's smaller. And I'll be using the thicker one. And you will need some big needles. So I'm using yarn needles and you just need the hole to be big enough that it will fit thick thread or cording through. You'll need scissors. You will need your paper that you're going to put in there. And you will need some thread, some, some good thick thread, something like upholstery thread, or I'm just gonna use this cording here. And some more optional things, whatever colors you like. I found this at the dollar store, it's just, um, just some wrapping things, just to kind of make it a little more interesting. I have these tassels. I got these at the dollar store as well. They come in a few different colors. And then I have just a few kind of odds and ends that I might stick on there. I don't know. I have some little dangly things just to make it more interesting. But these are, again, just your own personal preference and completely optional. So the paper that I am using, I got from Michael's and it's just Artist Loft. So it's, you know, a budget brand for sure. I wanted to use watercolor paper because I want to have the option to paint right on the paper. I will be adding lots of collage elements and mixed media things, but I did want to use water paper, watercolor paper because I want to be able to paint on it. So this is 140 pound, so it's quite thick and it's cold pressed and there is kind of a rougher side and a smoother side. So it's not going to be the best watercolor paper in the world, but it's going to be good enough for my art journal because uh, for the most part, I'm going to be using it in a mixed media way and using lots of different crayons and pencils and ink pens and whatnot. And then on some of them, I might just do like a more traditional watercolor painting, but on most of them, that's not what it's going to be anyways. So that's why I'm totally fine with using this. Plus, it was a really good uh, deal. So you get 24 sheets of paper. This came in three, a three pack for $20, it's one of their everyday value items. 72 sheets in all. So you can use whatever kind of paper you want. You can use 90 pound paper, and then if you're going to be doing mostly collage on it, if you know you're just doing collage on it, then probably 90 pound is fine. If you want to do lots right on the paper, 140 is going to be better. It's just more sturdy. I'm going to cover this and then we're going to get started with putting the paper in there. If you have not watched the video where I cover this and use Jane Davenport's collage papers to cover this, then uh, check that out there. I'll put the link in that little eye up there. And you can check that out and then um, you can watch that after this or you can watch it before this and then come back, whatever, doesn't matter.
So now this is all done. Um, as far as what I need to do now, I can always add more later. I'll probably paint in some hair. I might add some more color to her face and her face, I don't know. Um, but that's just kind of, that I can figure out as I go along. Uh, what you need to do is just do the main cover and I can even add things to here. And with with an art journal, I think, you know, you're, it's never really, you can always add more if you want to add more or you can finish it and be done with it. You know, it's there's no, there's no set of rules, right? So anyways, um, this is a good foundation for this and now I am going to cut up some papers. I think I'm going to have three three sections. So if you were to look in some of these that you buy, you can see that there's, um, this one has a few envelopes and stuff and you can do that. This one has two, two little sections and um, you know, I can probably add more in there. Okay, there's another string here, so I can add more. Um, and Jane Davenport's journals, I don't have any, but they're very much like this. Um, these were just cheap ones and I'm gonna use them for my travel journals. And you can add sections to them. Some are for like poster paper, some are uh, for watercolor paper, and just whatever sections you want. So that's the same kind of idea that we're doing here. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to score them halfway across. Each of them are just scored halfway across the page and that works good for the size of book I'm using. If you are using a different size book, you might want to adjust your measurements. Now I have three sets of five here and I have some extras that will be, uh, I'll show you how those are gonna work in a second. And so I have actually used my die cut machine and just cut little windows in one of each set. So what you're going to want to do with each set is put them all inside each other. And these are called signatures actually. And my idea for some of these, especially for like this one, I'll probably put a girl's face in here and then when you open it up you'll see the rest of her or something like that. I don't know. That's just kind of what I'm thinking for now. Now that these are all together I need to mark them here and here the same place. So I'm going to get my pencil and my ruler. So these are just a little bit bigger than the than this, which I'm totally fine with. If you don't like that, because I kind of like, like it's not, once it's all together, you're not really going to see it. And I kind of like, you know, uneven pages. I really like layers and stuff. And uh, so that doesn't bother me, but you could easily just cut off that last edge of each one, but I'm just not going to worry about it. If, if one of the pages bothers me like that, I can go later and cut it off. So, so because this is smaller than this, I'm going to go by this measurement, and I don't have a really long, oh, uh, where's my long ruler? I think my daughter took it for me. I'm going to blame her. So I'm going to use this annoying uh, trimmer, paper trimmer. So here, so the middle is about, um, it's about eight and a half. So we're gonna go four and a quarter. And you know how I hate measuring. So we have four and a quarter, so that's about the middle. Just, um, let's do one there. So that's one inch and then one inch from here. And no, this doesn't really make a lot of sense because I'm, I'm just measuring an inch from here, an inch from here. And then for this, I'm just going to line it up so it's even. I'm not going to measure this. I'm just going to do these dots exactly where they are. Because honestly for me, that'll be more accurate than if I measure. For you, probably not. But the way I work, that's how it is. And so you're going to take your awl, put it through, make sure that your papers are lined up. And it's nice to have a little foam thing underneath here. It'll make it a lot easier. I don't know, I have one, I don't know where it is. 
I'm still not knowing where some of my stuff is from moving. Most of the stuff I've organized, but I organized it and I don't know where to put it. So all my stuff is unpacked, but I'm not used to where it is. Okay, I'm just gonna wiggle that around just to make sure we've got enough room there. Okay, so there we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make these straight across and I can use these lines here. Now this would be a good place to measure because you don't wanna be having it at an angle here. So I am actually going to measure this. So you're going to go through here. And then through here. starting to rip you can see that it's starting to rip so maybe this stuff isn't the best I got it at the dollar store so that could be why it looks like it's gonna fall apart here but we'll see if we can make it work okay. and then go down to the bottom one really hope this doesn't rip. I'm just going through one layer at a time here. And then you're going to go up through the middle hole again. Now this, this could be iffy because it's already got so much coming through it. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger. Pull that tight. And come up through here. And come up on the other side. So this is going to be on this side. So I want to come up on this side. If I can. get all that and then the reason why you want to come up on the other side is because then you tie this around here and this does seem like it stays pretty good but kind of rubs off so I think I'm just going to do the other two with with this
Okay, so uh, I didn't want to tie this because then I have to untie it every time and I think I'm going to have to probably put something different on anyways because this seems to be pretty cheap stuff from the dollar store. So I just looped it around a bunch of times and uh, I just wanted to put some charms on it just to give you an idea of what that would look like. So if I, when I find a different thing for this, uh, I will move the charms over to that and so let me just show you again so all I did all I did was just go around these loops the middle one and just loop it like that and then I just pull it around and loop it around so when you're actually working the journal these because they're tied onto here they don't have to be underneath and in your way you can just kind of get them out of the way like that so there's still room to put other things in. If I wanted to, I could put another insert there. So the, what I was going to do with these is just kind of add them in just random places. So I'm going to glue that in and attach it to here. And then that would just pull down. You can't really see very well because it's all white. So I'll glue those in. And then here's another one. And I'll do that somewhere over here. So that's kind of the same thing. I just did different shapes. And with this one, I'm going to do a girl, and then her hair will come out this way. So when you pull it down uh, or lift it up, you'll see her hair. And then these ones, I am just going to have them go on the edge like this and then pull them out like that. And this one will pull in this way. So I'll put it on this side of the page. So there's just fun things you can do and and then with the with the shapes that I that was were cut out I think I'll probably just put I don't know watercolor washes on these and then just add them as another layer onto some of these pages so I will be doing pages in this and other journals here and there and and just um, be doing I'll Every once in a while I'll put a video up of showing you of a bunch of pages I've done in here. And so you can just be watching for those videos. Hope this explained everything for those of you who are asking how to bind the pages in here. And if you do have any questions about any of this, just comment down below. And this will be, I guess, all included in the Jane Davenport playlist as well because I used some and it's just kind of part two. So I'm just going to title it art journal whatever part two and make sure you check out the first part of this video and I will be adding a part three when I get a decent amount of pages in here to show you I'm not going to be doing a video on every single page in here but um, I'll do updates on my art journals and so I hope to see you on the next video and bye for now